Welcome back to Fun Town, everybody. Hello. Things have changed a little bit. We're on hiatus yeah. from Dockheads. So now I am not only joined by comedians Jeff Oske and Austin Real, but also Lady of Radio, Jess Alsman. Hey. Hello. It's great to be here and finally meet Austin. You yeah. Like this we just cool. realized right before go time, you totally. guys have never met. Yeah. It's like the Brady Bunch right now. Hey, buddy. Hi. Does that work? <laughs> In our multi, we're finally no full multiplex. We okay. have four, oh, yeah. four corners of a screen now, which is kind of cool yeah. for the video people on Patreon that'll see this. Oh, wait, and I'm clips. still going the wrong way. Yeah, no, there's a learning curve to it, Jeff. It's backward. I, I think you'll get it, though, by the end of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Dude, I haven't gotten it in four weeks. I don't yeah. know why it's going to start tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we all decided because Austin, well, Jess and I decided because Austin and Jeff had mixed drinks ready that we needed to go get one. Yeah. I don't know how your experience went, Jess, but I rushed. I ran in there to hurriedly get this drink together. The ice maker push button thing on the, my fridge all of a sudden stops working <laughs> for the very first time. Just goes out. And then I have to try to get ice manually out of the fridge, which I haven't done in a very long time. I've been living on automated dump ice things for I don't know how long. So it's stuck. You poor and thing. I, I'm like tapping it, trying to, to get it to come loose, the drawer thing. Oh, and man. finally when it goes, the whole thing goes. So all my <laughs> ice just litters the floor in the kitchen. So I'm scooping it all up real quick to put it, <laughs> throw it in the Are sink. your dogs out though? Like when the dogs hear ice, are they like, oh. I my get all of that. my dogs do not like ice. What? They won't touch Every it. Every dog I've ever had loves ice. Yeah. Mine, mine too. These my three? dog loves ice. The second I go to the to the freezer and she hears it, she's next to me because she knows my drunk is, ass is going to drop her dog or two. <laughs> That's how my mom and dad's dog is. Like she'll just sit and wait on point <laughs> as you pull the drawer out. You know, these dogs. I guess because maybe they're so old, Are they're they like, ah, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna break a canine on that one. Yeah, they're rescues for sure. Yeah. So. Every dog is a fucking rescue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, like every dog needs rescued. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. Whether it's got from, it from the puppy mill. But it needs rescued. It needs. Technically, though, I think like if you're a, like a movie or TV dog, really, you rescued your owner. I mean, they facilitate stuff for you, but you're Ooh. the bread maker. That's true. Yeah. You like know it, what? That's yeah. a good point. I... I I, I you gotta consider to, show to dogs Austin. more, Jeff. You really do. <laughs> what I'm are there going seven? With you. <laughs> what maybe seven <laughs> show dogs in at currently in business? Yeah, we're talking point oh one percent of the canine population for sure, but they're the elite. Yeah, yeah. Although, roles are kind of reversed. This, there the are probably there's <laughs> probably <laughs> two hundred dogs on Instagram that have more followers than me, if not <laughs> if not more than two thousand. Yeah. yeah, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah, I don't know why my dogs, they're not into it. And they're, they're like, one of them, Carter's just super particular about shit. He'll smell something like five minutes before he decides to put it in his mouth <laughs> if you're holding it. And sometimes well, he he'll, he'll just stand there till you drop it on the floor, and then he'll eat it. What about if they see squirrels? Or they're like, oh, you know, that's a toy or is that food? That's hilarious because they used to chase squirrels like a motherfucker in the backyard. I mean, they would dart like out of the door as fast as they could squirrel and they would chase it right up the tree or up the fence. And now I noticed today there was a squirrel just kind of lollygagging in the backyard. And these old fuckers looked at it and looked at each other and they're like, all right, let's go. And they just kind of half assed try <laughs> like, like, all right, we've caught on, but we're still going to act like dogs. We're never catching the squirrel. So we're not expending the energy. Like, it was such a, a show put on. By all three we'll of them. Go through the motion. Let's go. All come right, on. Come bark, on. Bark, bark. <laughs> run, run, run. <laughs> My cat loves joke. squirrels. Like, We're, yeah, I get. You gotta tell me. That's all I've been me. doing lately is Riri. Her name is Renezme, but she goes by Riri. Nice. Um, <laughs> because Renezme, well, she's Team Jacob. It's a whole Twilight thing. Uh. I digress. Donnie <laughs> How Maker. long have you had this cat yeah, since you were nine? So this is she like just turned cat. seven years old this month. Her That's birthday, it? we decided it was 420. And so she's seven now. It's crazy. But it was Donnie's cat, technically. So but wait, hang on. Okay, Jessica. So you're a Twilight him. fan. No. Well, Donnie named it. Donnie so named Donnie's. Her. 
Donnie <laughs> was the Twilight fan? Donnie was like, oh, no, she's Team Jacob. But okay, it kind of but- worked out because she was the runt of the litter. Like, she was really tiny, and all these kittens were coming out, like, pick me, pick she me. She sparkled. She wouldn't, yeah, basically. Well, no, she was warm, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the, anyway. It's just weird that Donnie is like... That Donnie's a Twilight head. I mean, he's like a 2013 Twilight head. The That's Twi- late hearts? in the Twilight game. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of a, it became a joke because, uh, I don't know. She was really, uh, she was special in our hearts, I guess. And he he named her Renesmee. Well, but that's we never actually adorable. called her that, I guess. So whatever. So Riri. We call her Riri. Riri, Riri. Now, what, refresh my memory. What character was Renesmee? That was Bella and Edward's daughter, and Jacob oh, okay. imprinted, imprinted. On her. Yes. Oh, you know your Twilight down I there. I know a little Look bit about you. Down there. Look you and Donnie are in the stupid club. Stupid brains that can't remember like how to do math, but I can remember everything I saw one time in Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget Anna Kendrick was in it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. One of the friends. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> Jeff, you mentioned grilling earlier. Did you oh, wait a minute? This meal you made, first of all, was did you grill this? And I want to hear more about I it. Did, I grilled the entire thing. Uh, oh, it's grill first season of all, again. Wait, real quick, uh, for those of you, just like what's do you do you give out like your Twitter, your Instagram, oh, yeah. and oh, stuff? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, Instagram is at Jessica Alsman, which it's Jessica, and then A L S M A N on Twitter. It's at J and Alsman. I need to change my Twitter handle so it's the same. But there's anyway. Because she has been posting pictures of the squirrel that yes. her cat They're has besties. been befriended. Have you named the squirrel? Does trolley. it have a twilight? Uh, I named her theme? Trolley because she trolls the deck every day. Because I usually put out bird seed because I have this Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Cardinal. And because, you know, a guy and a girl cardinal, they always go together. They're, they hang out as pairs. It's 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 love. I didn't know that. Now, like do you, ducks. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you know that this is a female squirrel? Can Because yes. I can't tell the difference. How the do you? picture... If you look, because I have pictures on my Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, she's got you the nipples. You can see the vagina if you look well, <laughs> really close. If you if you really put, spread your nips. fingers, yeah. She's got the nips. She's been feeding her baby squirrels, which oh. are, are named kits, uh, the proper term for baby squirrels. And I've really? seen, and it's not a baby, but I'd call it a teenage squirrel running around. And if you've seen a little tiny squirrel, they run so fast. Yeah, they're amazing. fast. And so... So you yeah, got she, this big old mama squirrel that has like this close friendship with Riri. Yeah, she always comes up to the door looking in, and Riri's like usually meows when she sees a critter or an animal. But when that one just came to the door, like Riri's like, <laughs> dude, that just, thing was oh, okay. like stretched out, like it was like showing off its tits up so against the window. She started getting a little crazy. Started to try to because it's a glass door with like uh-huh. the squares. That's so they're and separated. She kept trying to jump. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She kept trying to jump into it's the like house. It's like prison. It's like a prison visit. There's yeah. glass between them. Yes. They're like, yeah. so, so this is distancing. all you when you get out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Which I support that. That's fine. <laughs> that they're both females, but I don't know if the inner critter thing will work. But yeah, it's yeah, it's 2020. <laughs> I don't think you even have to worry about it working if they're both females. That's true. They just roll around on each other yeah. and keep each other warm. It's just a lot yeah. of heavy petting. That's all it is, I guess. Yeah. I guess def- that's how you define working. I mean, yeah. they're not going to produce anything from right. it other than, I don't know, a good time. Making making biscuits. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so silly. And there's a fox that's been roaming the neighborhood, so that's exciting. That's cool. I love having wildlife around. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, Jeff, you have plenty. Yeah, are, you, are you still feeding the feeding the squirrels at your house, Todd? Yeah, I still throw still the nuts doing out every squirrel day. Squirrel charcuterie. Uh-huh. Yeah, Todd, Jessica, if you're unaware of this, Todd makes a squirrel charcuterie board mm-hmm. uh, for his squirrels. Uh, he puts some grains, uh, some nuts, uh, some uh, 12-year-old line. salami that has yeah. been hand dried. <laughs> uh, he in does Italy. a mustard sort <laughs> of bar. Yeah. A smear. Yeah, it's just a smear for color mostly, but you yeah. can rub your. Yeah. Salami he, he in He makes them. his own nice. mustard for the squirrels. He, he was afraid he fresh that they weren't doing well during quarantine, <laughs> so he yeah. wanted to put some extra food out for them. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in the squirrel world, so just in case. And I always put out the corn feed every day for the ducks. We have these two, sometimes three ducks Aww. that come and visit. We just we had a naming process, uh, Marnie and I did, for the ducks, and 
people submitted names, and the winners were Tony and Carmela from the Sopranos. Oh, nice. Yeah, because the ducks that he had in his pool. So Funny. a lot oh, of other good, good names. Idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we named ours Quackers. <laughs> <laughs> we had a we went back when we had chickens we got a duck somebody's like hey you want a duck and we're like yeah we'll take a duck that thing lasted like three days before it got eaten alive because <laughs> ducks don't go into a coop they just kind of root they just kind of like nest in the corner and this mm, right. raccoon's like oh oh Hi, duck. oh here's what's on the buffet today <laughs> uh <laughs> duck sweet <laughs> look what the huskies left out for so, me. yeah so <laughs> quackers was uh he got he got quacked. He, Dang. I know, man. The kids were not happy. Hey, it's part of the life cycle. What are you gonna do? Uh, we we have so the, we the three ducks that come from, and it's weird when the there's the third duck comes and he's not very welcomed. Like I can tell, it's another male duck, mm-hmm. and the bigger male duck is very bothered by this smaller yeah. male duck. Who I assume is younger and has you know more of a, a no, shot. No, he's my gay friend. He's yeah. not gay. <laughs> Play a game until That's I exactly. fuck up and he's gonna try to bang you. He's got a flat build hat and a monster. He's not gay. We're yeah. <laughs> Big UFC shirt on or something. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. So I've been excited about grill season. When you were talking pre-show oh, yeah. about this meal, I want to hear more about it. So I have some grill it, questions for you guys. Just my basic. I, I just have a, a gas grill, uh, so I, I can only do some basic ass grilling. Mm-hmm. But tonight I did uh, I did some sirloins. Uh, I did uh, some baked potatoes, which have basic ass. But then I did Brussels sprouts with roasted uh, walnuts and blue cheese. And I did that Ooh, in like a pan over the fire. And what? It, they turned out the bomb. Tonight was the best they've ever been. So Holy I was super goodness. happy with that. I had two servings of everything. My walnuts gas is going to be cheese. atrocious tonight. <laughs> that sounds delicious. It does. I mean, that, I'm going to try that. With... I melted a little blue cheese on the steaks as well. I, I That's went, a good move. I, went, I had a little left in the container from the Brussels sprouts, and I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm going to blue cheese the fuck out of this whole meal. You know, I, I found at Kroger on my last trip was like a blue cheese garlic spread. So it's for dipping or spreading on crackers and stuff or a charcuterie tray. But uh, I bought the container because I'm like, look how spreadable it is. And I grilled two steaks on the grill and, put, and rubbed that on them at the end and just yes. kind of let it melt down into it halfway and then took them off. And it was the bomb. Yeah. Now, how do you grill like your steaks? Are you like a... Are you a reverse sear? Are you a straight sear and then low? Are you? How do you do yours? Yeah, I sear each side on a high heat. I like. I'll get it up to almost five hundred. Throw it on. Shut the door for a second. Take it off. Flip it. Do the same thing the other side. And then I take them off for a second. Lower the temp to because I like to slow cook my steaks. And then I'll put them back on. Huh? Yeah, that's how I do it. I don't even know if that's right, but it seems to keep them fairly moist. I don't know. Jeff, what about you? Uh, usually lately I've been turning all five burners on as high as they can get. It gets like 700 degrees. I throw it on three minutes on one side, uh, three and a half and then flip it three and a half on the other side. That's why I did tonight. That sounds good to me because I am assuming those get kind of a char on the outside. I mean, they're redder toward the middle. Yes. Super she, red. I can't I mean, get my a, lady to eat that. That's shit, a medium. Though. Like me and my lady, like, like blood on the plate. Yeah. Like we want. Well, that's yeah, what it tastes like. Best. A couple of werewolves over there. <laughs> <laughs> I love but, it. But for the kids, uh, usually we do. I cook it longer for them because yeah. they, they don't want to. They, they want like, it more evenly. Yeah. yeah. They're like, is this bl- Oh, the kids. Yeah. Why can- is this not gray? Now, growing up, my father uh, cooks a steak uh, to the point where you have to drop, put a droplet of water on it afterwards <laughs> to rehydrate it like it's astronaut food. <laughs> and that's how I was raised. So. Me too. My dad would cook them shits till they were about, I don't know, a quarter inch thick. <laughs> they just cooked down to nothing. They were like inverted in a U. They were yeah. so dry. You're like... <laughs> Kunk when it hit the plate, like oh, he's like oh, these are delicious. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. What about you, Jessica? Do you have steak money? Um, I don't know how to cook 
the steak. Uh, but the Don will cook. You is he a good griller? Well or medium. He is a good griller. Did you call yes. him the Don? The Don. That's, that's why she calls him. The Don, Don. I gotta meet this guy. I think he's the You know, Don. and when you meet him, you're like, yeah, he is the Don. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very yeah. professional, like, but then he's silly. He's, he's got like kind of a cool, down. artsy looking beard, you know, but the yet. Twilight guy. But he's a professional, <laughs> so when you see him at work, he looks professional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jessica, I'm a huge nerd. Mix. So really anyone who like unabashedly embraces some fandom that they shouldn't be allowed to, I love. <laughs> well, you, you two will get along just Oh, wait. Shit. That, yeah. yeah. These guys will get along just These great. video windows are hard to figure out. I, I screw it up every time. So stupid. But yeah, you guys are two peas uh, from a pod, of a pod, however you say it. But yeah. So what do you nerd, uh, explain to Austin, uh, Jess, what you nerd out on? Yeah, what's, what's your, your nerd Like, shoot? what's your top two nerd out things? Um, I think Johnny and I both are really big we're into The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead family, if you will. Mm-hmm. I love and Walking then, Dead. Um, gosh, it's hard to nail. We were into Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, Rick and Morty. I love Rick and Morty. I'm trying to think what he's into right now. Westworld isn't one of uh, both Westworld. of you in the Westworld a lot. Now, real quick, without thinking, tell me one that you don't want anyone to know. Oh, Ooh, I yeah. don't know. I'm not afraid. Oh, Outlander. I'm a huge. I love Outlander. Oh yeah, I haven't watched. That. I've That's seen it, not movie. watched oh, it. Good. Yeah, That's so, got like so a lot of watch with your lady. story. Yeah, I should check it out though. You should season one. It might be I, my Twilight. You know what I mean? It might be. be my. Hey, I have a movie recommendation for all you guys. And I avoided this movie for a long time, even though it was up for an award, and I think it won an Academy Award or two. But Green Book with v- oh, Vigo yeah. Mortens- v- Vito Mortensen, Mort- God damn it. I can't remember his name right. Mortensen, right? Yeah. So it Air is Force. so good. Green Book is a five star all around. I don't care what walk of life you come from, it's for everyone. Men, women, rich, poor, it doesn't does not matter. It's got everything. And well, it's it's funny, it's heartfelt, like it'll make you tear up. It's it's just fucking good. It's one of the better movies I've seen in a long time. Really? Yeah. I have not seen it. Yeah. Sounds so real nice. Everybody <laughs> should watch Sounds Green like Book. A nice time. <laughs> My lady's been trying to get me to watch that for the better part of a year, and I'm always like, ah, nah. I got to be in the mood. Like it's going to be all serious, yeah. and it's just one of those yeah. movies that's really heavy. I'm not ready to get into all that, and it's not. It handles, you know, what was going on in that time as far as racism for entertainers, you know, and, and they, even though they were rich, they couldn't go to most of the country, you know, and stay in a hotel. Like it captures all that, but it's still like the relationship between the two is so much fun because. This is a Guido, is his driver, like who basically worked part time for the mafia as a thumb breaker, <laughs> and he's also a door guy. Gets his job as a, this job as this guy's driver to take him on these gigs to the south, which hadn't been done by very many black entertainers at the time. He's a pianist, and it is fucking awesome, awesome. So everybody watch Green Book. Mahershala nice. Ali, he can do no wrong. Yes, I couldn't think of his name. Thank you. He's pretty yeah. great in everything he does. Mm-hmm. He is. Oh my gosh! From what is it? Um, True Detective. Luke Cage, season yeah. one. He's great. He in was Luke great. Cage. True That's, Detective, I could, amazing. I don't want to go into spoiler alerts, but I thought he was terribly misused in that. In I've which? not seen it. In Luke Cage. Oh, he was good, but I rather I wanted him to stick around. I know. That's what I, I was mean, getting at. Like all of a sudden, he he's like amazing, and then he's just gone, and you're like, oh well, the guy that's supposed to fill that void. Nowhere near his level, right? So is he a is he the main character? He is not. He's no. one of the main bad guys. Oh, okay. Now I heard he might be playing Blade. He. I is. heard that as well, which is going to be lit. And That's I cannot. Be sweet. Did you guys love all the original? I Blades? loved all the original Blades. Jeff, did you watch them? I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, so Blades, what? go on. God damn it, Jeff. You, you would it. you would like at least the first Blade because it has um, um, Wesley Snipes in it. He oh, plays I like Wesley. Yeah, and it was back in the heyday of Wesley too, right? Pre like tax evasion Wesley. Yeah, but it was it was sort of his last solid acting move that he did yeah yeah Yeah. but he plays a daywalker so he's like his mother 
he was born after his mother was infected by a vampire. She was bit like when she was going to go into labor. Yeah. Oh, very. Uh, so he has so the best like of both half, worlds. Kind yeah. of like Twilight. He can walk around in the light, but very he has all the power yeah. and strength of a vampire. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. So he, it's basically a comic book character superhero, but he's he's half vampire. So. He's oh, a vampire that's cool. hunter. Yeah. Speaking of vampires and Wesley Snipes, technically, you have to see if you haven't seen this TV show yet because it's based off the movie. What We Do in the Shadows on FX, Taika Waititi, is, is, this whole show is amazing. I What's it about? It. It's these vampires, like they're filming a documentary. It's almost like like how they do Modern Family, but it's a vampire group of you know vampires, I guess. Uh-huh. And they're just checking in with the camera crew and stuff, but they do have a familiar, you know, they're eating and killing people, and it's just, it's hilarious. It's nice. very casual, and it's... Like a quick watch. And there's other kinds of stuff, too. Which I, There's werewolves. Um, mm-hmm. There's like witches and ghouls and all this other stuff that they encounter. It's, Dude, it's, this is it's not hilarious. the case, but it's almost like we planned this because you guys have no idea what I have on my questions list for today. But you guys are fucking meshing with – it's like a mind melt we have going on right now because here's two of my questions. I'll okay. ask the first one. If you were offered by a vampire – to become a vampire and be immortal, but you had to live the rest of your life as a traditional vampire, would you do it? You can walk the earth for the rest of its time in existence, but you have yeah. to be a vampire. Yeah, I would. You would? Okay, do yeah. vampires kill people? Well, well hang on, though. That's, my, that's what we we'll talk about. Hang on, though. Let's just say you do require blood for nutrition to stay alive. Losing the family would be a big blow. That'd be hard. But I'd push on through, get into doing the vampire thing. Okay. But here's the deal. There's plenty of pieces <laughs> of shit for you to eat for the rest of eternity. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of people you could kill without feeling really that bad about it for the rest of eternity. Agreed. And then let's go into why we would or wouldn't. But Jess, would you become I'd, a vampire? I'd probably say no. You would say no? Yeah, I just could add chicken out on all the killing part. I'm sure once I'm turned, you know, instincts take over. But I'm like, yeah. I'll pass. Okay. Jeff, you think you would do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeff would make a fantastic man. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally do it. Yeah, now, I have like 30 people in my Facebook feed right now that I would bite and kill tonight to feast yeah. off their blood. Yeah. Feed on the feed, baby. Feed on the feed. That's <laughs> going to be our vampire motto. Uh, I I think we would all thrive very I would be cool to be a vampire, I think. And not that I, I want to kill, but the, like I said, there's lots of people that need killing that nobody would care if you killed. So well, then if not you have aging to. is pretty dope. Real yeah. dope. You can right. live through so many things, man. Can't you just give me some vamp retinol and I'm just trying to make that work? That's eye cream, you guys. That stuff helps with wrinkles. Um. I and I think I would just communicate to the rest of the world and be like, "Hey, I'm a vampire, you guys, and you know I'm gonna have to go around killing people." Uh, or you guys could just all collect blood, give blood every day, keep me a little storage here to drink <laughs> out of the the chilled cabinet that I'll keep, and I won't kill anybody. Has anyone ever defined how much blood is needed on a daily basis for a vampire to keep going? Jeff, That's we can hop question. on Reddit, and I guarantee you there's some nerd <laughs> has several spreadsheets depending on size and weight so of said funny. vampire. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if I am just a boomer. I know I'm not like a traditional boomer or just old as shit. I can't figure out Reddit or find shit on Reddit to save my goddamn life. I'm just like, where where are <laughs> buttons and stuff? Like, yeah. I, it's oh, yeah. just so confusing <laughs> for my old ass. The subreds. Yeah, 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 I think that's like a defining one for maybe people in their 30s, sort of. Like, we Reddit's the last thing we're going to get. <laughs> so <laughs> whatever whatever comes next, not for, I don't do TikTok. I can't do it. And frankly, seeing people my age do TikTok's fucking depressing. I, I, <laughs> I have TikToked with my youngest. Uh, I know you have. Twice. Jeff, I'm not I respect proud it. Of it. I'm not I did proud it of once. Child in with I love you. her. Yeah. You're doing it with a child. She asked me to do it. I didn't ask her to do it. You know. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know. No, but you can tell some of the parents were like, get your ass in here. We're doing a TikTok we're doing tonight. A TikTok. <laughs> and we got rehearsal it an hour and a half before. <laughs> Although I did say that when she was like, hey, I want to do a TikTok. I'm like, we're rehearsing this shit. I'm yeah. not going right. to embarrass myself. We've, re- 
rehearse for an hour and a half and then I embarrass myself. Like it, no amount of rehearsing was going to help my dancing. Like it, it was, I'm just not good at it. I it love was, watching was, the dance videos though, except yeah, if I was like, Donnie, let's do this dance video. He can like watch a choreography once and nail it. Um, really? He's, he's so very jealous. coordinated. He can sing and play, he can do whatever. He's like, hand him an instrument and he's like, whatever. Uh, but really? then if I tried to do it with him, he'd just be like, Oh, you're getting it, and I'd be like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm embarrassed." <laughs> Never I, mind. I, I made a meme today based on TikTok because it's true. It's something I've noticed, and the meme was just a bunch of cops like at a crime scene, like gloving up and looking down at something. And then in the caption, I put, uh, "Hey guys, when this is over, you want to do a TikTok?" Because cops love TikTok. Like every third one, when you scroll with some cop on duty in uniform yeah. doing some kind of dance or something. Like this new generation of cops, that's all they're, they're worried about. I think they only get hired now. Like they're seeing new people that never would try to be cops before only become cops to make their TikTok more cool. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> Because they have a uniform. <laughs> My favorite right now is like uh, how like some of the medical wards will like the nurses or doctors will make like a 30 second TikTok. Yeah. And then all my conspiracy friends like post it and they're like, apparently people aren't dying because these motherfuckers have time to <laughs> make a TikTok. And it's like, yeah, they just had to tell their 19th family someone died today. Sorry they wanted to do something to lighten the mood for <laughs> right. 30 seconds, you asshole. Like, well, they got time to to TikTok, they got time for COVID. Like, fuck, <laughs> you fucking assholes. They get 15 minute breaks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> They're allowed to piss. Yeah, Marnie got a bunch of those on one she did with this other dude nurse because they were in scrubs and they just did this dance thing and it was really cool looking. But then people were like, oh, I can't believe you're, you're doing that at work. Da, da, da. It's like, I have fucking lunch. It's, the, you know, I'm allowed <laughs> time out of surgery. Jeez. Like That's we're not so in there stupid. over a body with a liver hanging out, fucking do it slap. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, using their yeah. yeah you got a That's heart in one hand, hand and a yeah. kidney in the other. <laughs> that is oh so God. fucking dumb. That people is so are dumb. dumb. Those people are out there putting their asses on the line to do that shit. I don't care it, if they want to smoke weed while they're doing it. It does not bother. Yeah, them. right. Except don't breathe it into my asthmatic lungs. Exactly. Right? <laughs> but that's the only thing. But the yeah, peop- but I mean, whatever. the people drink, that comment. Oh yeah, but the people that comment like that on stuff like that are the ones I would definitely eat if I was a vampire. I would yeah. only. Oh, yeah. I would just totally. I would just monitor <laughs> social media when I saw somebody say something stupid like that. I would use my vampire brain to find them. Where are they? That would be amazing. I would Kill hire them. you. Like this guy left an Im- a really rude comment for no reason. Oh, that'd be. This so is great. his IP address. Find him. I would bring. I would bring his severed head back to you. Oh, here you amazing. go, Jess. Well, well, like, here you go, Reed. Yeah. You I will way. tell you. We'd get more views on the podcast. Like, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, you're like out of the window. No, Todd, just look what I got, Jess. <laughs> End of the day. And I think 1041 would really take off, too, Todd. <laughs> it would. Uh, what, way cooler stories. Dude, what if all... third person about himself? This is crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine if all four of us were vampires? We would have the number one show. We would have the. We would be ahead of Rogan, our podcast oh, yeah. would. We would be so popular. But yeah, we cannot be... Talk. What we do in the shadows, because it is fantastic. I wonder all if we would show up on cameras, though. We might be invisible. We can do video. We would only have to do audio. It's just mirrors that we can't show up. Well, maybe I wouldn't be mirrored anymore. Maybe I would know (laughs) I'm pointing at who when I'm trying to point where. Like, however it's not. All right, here's my next question related to this topic. Um, It is the worst monster to be. Like, of all the TV and movie monsters, like the stereotypical ones, like, what do you think would be the worst? Because I think we all agree vampire are probably pretty cool. So, out of all the others, is there one where you're like, oh, I fucking, that sucks, I'm the mummy, or whatever, you know? Probably <laughs> Frankenstein's monster, because, like, mm. you're just misunderstood, and you're big, and you're just, you can't run fast, you're just strong. And thank you for saying Frankenstein's monster, because I get sick and tired of people calling the monster Frankenstein. Frankenstein was the doctor. Yeah. It's just easier to say, probably. I, it is, but. So, it's also, like I'm not sure Frank and... and I'm going to have a little nerd moment here. In the book, Frankenstein's monster actually starts to, like, get out ahead of humans. So, like, he is Mm -hmm. fast. He's like a superhuman almost. He's learning at an incredible rate. Um, He's, like, 
at the end on par intellectually in my perception of dr frankenstein yeah there's a great series about that where it's mary shelley's frankenstein and a yeah. movie with robert de niro where he played frankenstein's monster so he's just like, like trapped up in the arctic thinking he's smarter than everybody yeah, oh. which is really just a libertarian, I think, at this point. Oh, right? I, mean, <laughs> just like, I think he'd be libertarian, just living in the Arctic, thinking he's got it all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> I need to read. <laughs> I've never read the book, but I've seen a movie and a TV show based on the book, yeah. and so I get it. That's what I do. That's how I read books. Yeah. I just look for movies and TV shows that come out based on the books. I, I listen to books, but then talk later, like I read them. <laughs> see i hate when people are like oh i'm reading this and then it's an audio tape it's like no you're listening to this yes you yeah. aren't reading it like there's yeah. a difference i can anyone can listen it's yes. way easy to lay on your couch and listen to like so just say you're enjoying read a goddamn book <laughs> takes effort it takes time it takes energy like i can't read a book on my way to work but i can Fucking listen to one, which means yeah. it's way too easy. It's, that doesn't count. You should have to say you listen to it. Yeah. So thank you, Austin, for being honest. Yeah. I, I am one of those who appreciate it. You just enjoy them is what you do. And then yeah. let people decide if you're a, a listener or a reader when it comes to books. Yeah. The funny thing is, I'm neither. I don't want to listen to your book or read your book. <laughs> so... Uh, not yeah, doing it. I, I thought that listening to books would be a much easier way to consume it. And I, I had, I've listened to a couple to prepare for different topics in 1041. And it's equally as miserable as reading books. So <laughs> it's like, oh, this is a person who's not good at telling a story because you're telling it just as if you were, I was reading it. So it's, yeah, it does not help. Like if I could get cool, act, like Samuel Jackson to read the book or something, I that would be a cool book. But it's oh, not. Yeah. It's some author who is not good at reading in, I, in an entertaining fashion. I wish I would have been Teen Wolf back when I was a teen. Like oh, that teen would Wolf. have. Like I think that's one of the worst monsters, but I think it's one of the best. It does look like painful the when they transform. It looks painful every time. Yeah, that's when the you, only their thing fingernails that, grow. That yeah. looks fucking painful as shit. And they do a lot of screaming. Ah, yeah, is I'm not turning? a fan of that. But I'm already pretty hairy, so I figure <laughs> like I'm most of the way there. Oh yeah. But I don't like the fact that it just comes on based on moon cycles. Like yeah. I want to be able to control that shit. Like, yeah. Agreed. I think the mummy for me, just because you're just an old crusty piece of shit and you're just wrapped up, you know. I don't. I don't I'm not. I'm not into it. The those movies are stupid. There's never been a good mummy movie. It's because the character sucks. I, every, <laughs> That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Um, and Brendan Fraser, he sucks. So. Oh, I love him. You take that back. <laughs> He's fantastic, and now and then. Um, he had a couple okay movies. Uh, I Jeff, no, Encino Man, sorry. Encino Man, I did oh, like yeah. Encino Good. Man. Is there a monster that you would hate to be just because you're pretty into monsters, I feel like? You okay. said, oh, you said Frankenstein's monster. Oh, yeah. I feel like that. that was the wrong answer now Austin. that I learned the truth I'd, about him. <laughs> I don't know, though. Hunchback? He's still pretty miserable. The Hunchback of Notre Dame? Any of them? Eagle Any? or whatever? I mean, because yeah. you just have a hunchback. <laughs> and I'm Agreed. assuming a good personality, but it's really just a hunchback. I also, have. I also, Austin, don't think they're technically monsters. I think they're just people with disabilities. So, well, oh. <laughs> I guess really, I don't want to be me right now because that's the monster. <laughs> uh, that's the worst monster to be is the guy who mistakes people with disabilities as monsters. <laughs> Oh my God, look at that monster. It's like, I'm blind, you asshole. <laughs> no, he gets he gets lumped in with the monsters. Enough. Look, look at that feely sunglasses monster with the cane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, an... <laughs> oh, the beast. Can I pick Beast and Beauty and the Beast? Is that a monster? But he had a yeah. beautiful heart and a beautiful soul. He lived in a fucking sewer. <laughs> like, yeah. that's the worst life anyone could, like, I want to be an above ground monster. And like, I don't want to live down in the shit and piss and, like, fucking tampons. Like, that <laughs> shit sucks. Like, yeah, I want to be above I ground. Pennywise. That's yeah. the scene they missed is during their kiss. He, she's like, oh, and he has a t tampon stuck in his beard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Got a bunch of <laughs> seaweed and shit <laughs> hanging out. Uh, <laughs> Gross. <laughs> also, he made what? Who was the broad net? Bell. Bell. Um, Bell was uh, Twilight, remember. right? Harry Potter. Yeah, Bell. In Beast, Beauty yeah. and the Beast, Beast? Bell, yeah, was it okay? He, he or was Bell the? Uh, he made her one hundred percent responsible for him getting over all of his shit, and that's a lot to put on somebody. That's, that's true. true. You don't go into a relationship with those type of fucking, especially stakes. for a sewer Agreed. rat. You should take anything you can get. <laughs> like yeah. you shouldn't be. There's nothing wrong with sewer rats because Splinter was awesome. Yeah, okay. I mean, but he was a master. Yeah, yeah. that's true. He was, a, yeah, he was one of the good. He was ones. incredible. And Shredder's those insane. kids would have had, they would have turned out to be pieces of shit if he hadn't they found them. They really would have. He <laughs> yeah. really instilled a sense of duty and honor in mm-hmm. such a young age. Like, but my, I think he was hitting them down in the sewer, right? So that's how you do that? Like, yeah. Yeah. Keep them away from. He also gave corruption. them weapons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what we should do is teach all you guys how to fight. <laughs> now that you're a teenager, I'd like to give you some swords. All right. We all hated Raphael, though, right? He was such a little whiny teen. I was a big Michelangelo guy. These two oh, yeah. have an opinion. You're gonna have to ask them about like no, I remember, friends or something. I, I was I was in the Michelangelo. I was a I'm trying to remember. I was still a kid when Ninja you Turtles a, first, the first generation of Ninja yeah. Turtles started. Like the late you would have been a teenager, maybe. Or? Yeah, I was like. Uh, I would just probably eighth grade, ninth yeah. grade. Yeah. Yeah. So My I son had a Ninja Tella. Turtles video game. That's all I know of. And I would play it with him all the time. It was a cool video game. Yeah. Jessica, you're Donatello. Uh, Michelangelo and Donatello were my two favorites. I When I played with uh, my brother and the neighborhood boys, I was always April. Mm, was yeah. Because yeah. you're a lady. April yeah. was cool, though. She yeah. was. She was. She is. But, but you wanted you wanted to be a turtle though. You right? didn't get any I weapons. Did. So if I got yeah. to be a turtle, I think I end up being um Donatello because he's purple. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. So all the other guys are like, uh, I don't want to be purple. Let's make the chick purple. Basically. Yeah. So all the all the kids are carrying around sticks and stuff, and you're just there with like a, a shitty disposable camera. Tim like Cameron I'm recording it and notes. chasing after turtles trying to kiss him. <laughs> Love me, Donatella, or whoever it is, Michelangelo, whoever's. Uh, That's awesome. All right, I have another question. Um, Well, we covered favorite things to grill. We covered all the monster questions and Green Book. So my last one is, who do you think, like, I, I thought about this the other day because I might or might not have been high, but... I saw my computer as I was laying on the couch watching Netflix go the screensaver come on. And I was like, man, that must suck. Like, if that's your job to create screensavers, like there's way worse jobs, but you know, like the dream was Pixar. And now you just design animated screensavers. screensavers. (laughs) Like something went wrong. In chasing that dream, you know, you're like, oh, I wanted to be making monsters and now I'm making swirly electrical thing currents. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much a question, just an observation. My, uh, my son has a program on this Roblox, which by the way, I'm on a nine email fucking quest to get my daughter's uh password unlocked somebody hacked her roblox account which is this gaming thing for kids and uh uh fucking i hate it like uh but on there uh they have like a million different games on there one of the things is a thing where you can build your own screensaver as a kid so my son the other day was Making his own screensavers. Maybe he'll be a professional screensaver, screensaver designer. Uh, he he did a pretty good job. I was impressed with all the screensavers he came Th- up But that's with. somebody's that was... full-time job, right? So you work for Apple or Samsung or whatever device makers are out there yeah. to manufacturers, and you just you sit in your office each day and make cool screensavers. Because there's no shortage of them, and people get tired of their screensaver very quickly. I have to feel, though, that for someone <clears throat> who knows what they're doing, that takes like four minutes. That's what I'm thinking. Probably. <laughs> like they make like a hundred in one day and then don't make any for five years. <laughs> yeah. like I feel like that's how. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I've never made a screensaver My before. favorite thing, like when you were something. a kid, 
you go in the computer lab and you would make a your screensaver come on like in one minute and you'd make the scrolling message that goes across and it's like mm-hmm. a really long message like so and so is a turd and you'd be like right that's the best <laughs> <laughs> that is all i made it right Oh, uh, what like the computer say school. about you, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> you smell. I'm not telling you what the computer told you. We, uh, I remember seeing my very first computer when I was in seventh grade. They brought it in to class, <laughs> and they set it down, and we were like, what in the fuck is that? And they're yeah, like, this is a computer. <laughs> yeah. Why is and this typewriter hooked to com- the TV? <laughs> 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 Very first computer I ever saw, and it was it was the first generation of Commodore, and they they set it up there, and the the whole class, the whole hour was dedicated to teaching us how to do one command prompt, and when you hit run, it would just the whatever you the two words you typed it would go repeatedly running up and down vertically on the screen. Oh wow! Took about fifty minutes. Of to of coding to make those two words bounce around a screen like that, like it was so primitive. We're, oh yeah. yeah, and I had no idea. We just following every like word. We're like we don't even know what computers are. It's like do this, do that, do this, do that. And like you, I put Kevin farted on mine because I refused <laughs> to just put Todd McComas. And, yeah, I love it. The very first, I, that's, um, until you said that, I was like, you know, I, I actually saw my very first computer. I was in seventh grade. That's fucking weird. It makes me old as fuck. I get it, but. <laughs> you're fine, Todd. Like, Austin, you were just born and computers were there. I'm kind of in a weird, which, Jessica, I think you probably are, too. I, I know about, like, when there was a computer lab you walked to. Mm-hmm, and same. then also had computers invade my life and become an everyday thing. Mm-hmm. So like I lived both worlds. Yeah, like a the bit. elementary school was in the nineties. Yeah. Um. Gosh, the computer lab, so much fun. You had to go so, to DOS. It's yeah. weird because like <laughs> I remember dial-up internet, all that crap. Mm-hmm. But when Ethernet came around, it just it became everyday thing. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I'm not, oh, I'm not dude. 12, Todd. What are you talking about? <laughs> when, when I first got internet, like, if you downloaded a photo, it took, like, a half an hour to uh-huh. download one photo. Oh, yeah. And so you would be downloading this chick, and you would, like, <laughs> you'd be like... <laughs> You'd be like, "Oh, this is hot. She's oh, she's beautiful." Uh, and then, "Oh, check out those tits." And then you'd be like, almost ready to finish. And then, like, you would her dick would be revealed at the bottom. <laughs> and you would have to decide whether or not to finish or or just. Uh, oh, man, those that, were always so disappointing. And let's be honest, I never made it to the bottom. I, I finished well, in the first three minutes as soon as I saw Booby. Dial up internet and I was, was done. a young man's game. You had to have that staying uh, power to jam down to dial oh, up internet. Yeah. You just Dude. go to a chat room, though, and you get, like, sexually harassed instantly with ASL, and then some creepy guys, like, want a cyber, and it's like, I'm 11! <laughs> and they're like, yeah, so that's yes the point. or no? <laughs> so. You know, yes! That's so weird. You know what was beautiful in the, the God, day I of... I hope my kids aren't going to that. <laughs> <laughs> Remember uh, Bear Share and uh, what was the big one? Um, Napster. For Pirate to Napster. Like, that was the shit. You could get any song you wanted for free. We thought it was mm-hmm. the shit. But it would take you also like 36 hours to download an entire like six songs oh to make gosh. your to make your you know baseball practice mix or whatever that you'd write on there with a Sharpie, you know. And uh, but I remember having to do it. You would do it the day before and let it run the rest of the day into the oh, night. Yeah. And it might be ready in the next morning. Or it for could when fuck you would up do. and you get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I and, remember we had like a rich friend that she had DSL and she could download a song in like a minute. And it was like yeah. witchcraft. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just the craziest thing. So we all had to go over there and burn CDs and do that stuff. Also, when you used Bear Share to do it, uh, you would burn through computers like condoms oh, because you, you yeah, it would just infect you every third go around. You're <laughs> oh, no. just filled with viruses and shit, and you'd have to just clean your whole system out and start all over again. Uh. Yeah, Jeff, is is this the bullet you have? That is the bullet I'm drinking. Yeah. Uh, I can't help but notice. 
You're not just drinking bullet. You're making you're making old fashioned. I'm making old fashions over here. I love yeah. it. Nice. You have a complete old fashioned kit over there. Uh, so I got Angusta bitters, <clears throat> yeah. a couple dashes of that. I do three, and then All what right. you're going to do is you're going to do a half shot of simple syrup. You can buy it in the store. I make my own. This is That's... some Earl Grey uh, ginger peach simple Whoa. syrup. Fancy ass. About a ounce and a half of that, shot and a half, <clears throat> and then uh, you do an orange peel. Right? Yeah. But little trick. I use this little cheese cutter, which I think that's what it is. Yeah. It could be a peeler. I normally cut cheese with it. But I think I it's a it cheese for slice of my feet. <laughs> I can never cut or peel an orange, so. And you Ooh. come along the outside. You get yourself a big fat guy. Don't do those little skinny guys. Mm -hmm. I like the big fat guy. That's dope. You do a little, little twist to get the oils to pop out of it. Run it around the rim a Ooh. little bit. And then... Normally you'd put ice in here, but I got this Yeti going, so I'm just going to dump it all in there. Nice. Boop. And the slice goes in there. Ooh. Perfect. Good to go. I love old fashioned. My Can favorite. you tell me how to make this simple syrup? Is this like a time and like simple do we syrup have time? is one part water, one part sugar. Yeah, That's but it? you had a bunch of other shit in there, like oh, boys well, what and berry. You, do and... Is you make <laughs> you make tea in the water, then put it in the sugar. Really. And then you just shake it up and stick it in the fridge. Here's what I did for my drink. I grabbed one of my Pure Life sweet teas, mm -hmm. filled my glass half full, and then I took some Kirkland, which is the um, the um, Costco brand vodka, and filled it the rest of the way up and put a couple ice cubes in there. You're drinking a vodka sweet tea? Yeah, I am. You going to use that sweet tea for a spitter later? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I saved the bottles a, over here. Do you have a favorite <clears throat> drink to use for a spitter? Like what? what Anything with a big a mouth bottle? on it. Like Pure Leaf has a wide mouth bottle. Yeah. Anything wide mouth is better. I would suggest anyone who needs a spitter get something with a full label on the outside, so the rest of us don't have no. to. Spit <laughs> <a spitter. laughs> it is like it is the most Disgusting. fucking head injury level thing that people who start <laughs> dipping are like, oh, this casual bottle of spit I have is fine to just mm -hmm. spit around, <laughs> talk with my hands, <laughs> tell fucking elaborate <laughs> stories with my spitter. <laughs> That's why, like, bottle. like when I would do it at work, I I would only use. Um, coffee cups with lids that came from the gas station i would purposely every day yeah. go to work and get one on the way to work so that i could have that cup for the rest of the day because it hides everything and at yeah. the end of the day i go in the bathroom dump it rinse it out throw it away but i worked with plenty of dudes that were like oh no let's just take this little water bottle even peel the label off and then and then the wrapper peeler would be in there mixed with the spit oh. there's no point in peeling the label off you're not going to get it confused with your water <laughs> i know it's brown and yucky oh, i guess if it's a tea no no you'll still know it's yeah, just a cleanse i think you'll know is that a smoothie you're drinking what is that? <laughs> ah. Gross. And people who do seeds aren't any better. It's like, just I know. get the fucking seed out. You it looks just as bad. It doesn't smell as bad, but it looks just as bad. Jeff, do you do seeds? Uh, back when, uh, back when I landscaped, yeah. all the, all the, all the uh, fellas I worked with, uh, they uh, they ate a lot of them spicy. Spicy. Yeah. They liked them spicy or ranch. My which, wife not eats a fan. ranch. It's, it's not a fan. It's the thing I hate the most about her. <laughs> it's, it's those ranch sunflower seeds. Jesus, I've never been more disappointed. My lady, Honestly. my lady is anything ranch. She will yeah. dip anything in ranch. She will dip her when she eats pizza. She'll pour ranch on her yes. plate and so dip does, in. It. So do we? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> not me. My lady. It's, just a, it. it's a lady thing then. No, I eat ranch. Or Johnny on my does pizza. it too. You do? Now, I like a like a chicken bacon ranch pizza, mm -hmm. you know, like if it's made that way. But I'm not going to take my pizza with marinara sauce on it oh, man. and then put it. Those I don't know. tombstone pizzas are perfect with ranch, though. <coughs> they are. They're like it adds something to it because they're kind of just very, it's not extra saucy. I love tombstone pizza. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I do, too. It's delicious. It's my favorite frozen pizza. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. I'll be honest. I put ranch on my baked potato on top of my sour cream. No, I am and, a fan of that. And my cheese. So my baked potato, I start with the butter, get it melted. I hit it with the cheese, get that melting. Then I hit it with the sour cream. Probably as much equal parts sour cream, equal parts potato. 
<laughs> then I hit it with a drizzle of ranch across the top, but I bring the ranch to the table because once I work through it. the initial, I hit it again halfway through the tater. Because nice. that's how I do my potato. <laughs> potato. Those other <laughs> toppings aren't going to get you through that whole potato, Jeff. No, no. you're doing you're doing the dairy quattro, mm-hmm. and I, I salute you for it. No, you're it. you're doing it right. You can't let it. It's like biscuits and gravy. You can't let it run out of gravy. If once it mm. goes dry, I'm done. Same yeah. way with a pancake. Once there's no more syrup, it's not a pool of syrup. I'm done with the pancake. <laughs> Jeff, I'm the same way. By the time I eat a baked potato, I've eaten like four thousand calories and toppings. With <laughs> oh yeah. I'm I don't the, know why I'm not losing weight. I'm eating nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <but baked potatoes. laughs> I'm the Gross same way bacon. with uh, loaded fries because it's basically uh, a, a loaded yeah. baked potato. I but I it. always have to have a side of ranch to after I have all the other goodness on there to <laughs> dip it off. Jessica, uh. what's the least ladylike thing you eat? Oh, I don't know. I, what's uh, the thing you're most ashamed of that you eat? <laughs> I eat well. This isn't. This is ladylike. I eat a whole tub of Cool Whip. Just cool whip. Just like with a just spoon. Just cool whip. Yeah, it's Holy delightful. Holy shit! <clears throat> like, um, so like you eat it like it's ice week. cream. Yes. Like you, in one sitting. I can, but usually I'll just do half in a sitting. Do you Donnie prefer it? When I'm sad. He'll be like, here's some cool whip. Like, Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And KFC coleslaw. It's almost like this perfect little. <laughs> Uh, variety meal wow. really do you prefer the tub of cool frozen i'm assuming it's frozen out of the freezer cool whip mm-hmm. do apparently you, pref- you have to let it thaw if you have it frozen which i've not waited before it's n- not it tastes a little bit like butter when that little, happens yeah yeah a little extra creamy i watched <laughs> now i i'm not a tiktok <laughs> fan but i watched this one tiktok video for a very long time and it was someone that has a monkey that lives in their house. Well, you can do TikTok if you have a monkey. That, that only makes you, sense. I think you have right. to, right? You yeah. have to. And so the monkey comes carrying a can of Ready Whip in this hand, and it walks up to the mom, and it, it just looks up so sad, and it keeps hand like <laughs> hitting the Ready Whip can up to her until finally she takes it, and he holds out his hand, and she <laughs> fills the hand, and he just sets her having the best time of his life <laughs> eating ready whip whipped cream out of his hand out of his pot and then he would lick it clean and then he would hold his hand up and she hand him the can and he would go run off with it like he was putting it away it was the most adorable thing i've ever seen now when and it was a little mom, monkey you mean a, a human or another monkey lady? <laughs> <laughs> a human mom okay <laughs> that would even be better lady let's talk oh about the single monkey mom here. <laughs> and she's working tiktok yeah and she's got a tiktok that's incredible <laughs> Oh my oh. gosh, that's great! Yeah, I, I, I literally watched it probably thirty times in a row. It was the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Uh, I don't know if it's still on there, but on Netflix there used to be a show called Escape to Chimp Eden. Really, and this guy goes around rescuing chimps. Mm-hmm. The whole thing's adorable. It's very enjoyable. It's very endearing. But there's a great episode where a guy's trying to tranquilize, tra- tranquilize, tranquilize a mm-hmm. chimp. With a dart full of ketamine because it was used as like a storefront chimp. Uh huh. So they're gonna take it to Chimp Eden. And uh, at the last minute, he gets up real close to shoot it. And at the last minute, the chimp pushes the gun and the guy shoots himself in the lake. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you got a, a dart shot. in your neck. <laughs> <laughs> there's a great shot of him looking at everyone he's with, like, uh, <laughs> what's gonna happen to me? <laughs> But it's just funny because the whole time they're kind of building up to like, you know, chimps chimps can read body language and they know your intention more than you'd think. And at the last minute, this chimp just pushes the gun. Real quick. <laughs> that is idiot. awesome. Uh, that's beautiful. I bet and you what, can YouTube that. What's the name of this again? Chimp Escape Eden. Chimp Eden. <laughs> so Eden was the chimp sanctuary. Yeah. And he just, he it was all about him going to getting chimps and bringing them and to the sanctuary. And he would go and he'd get chimps. Orangutans, bonaboos. I don't know if he had any gorillas. I think that's a big step to get into gorillas. That yeah. me is a big responsibility. Yeah, there's no cuteness there. It's pretty much just... No, that's raw power. Yeah, it's okay. going to kill you. What's a show that maybe was on for a season that you loved, or maybe two that no one heard about or no one else you knew, but then it just disappeared and you wish it they never would have? Jess. Oh, my god. Doctor, doctor. It was on CBS like in 1989 and 1990, starring Matt Frewer, which you may know him as, uh, crap, I forget his name. 
He's on Fear of the Walking Dead. Who's the uh, uh, Max Headroom? Oh yeah, yeah. Matt okay. Brewer, totally a great show. My family watched it. It was a whole ordeal. It disappeared. You cannot find it anywhere except the pilot is on YouTube, I think. Oh. I'm so glad you asked that, Jeff. It's like I've been waiting for years <laughs> to say that. And it's Dr. Doctor? Uh-huh. That, I love that guy. And what was it about? Uh, it was Two a doctors. doctor's office in <laughs> Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, they had great characters. Um it's really funny. It sounds like a shitty version of Wings. Oh, no. It was very funny because he's silly. He was like a, not like a Jim Carrey, but very animated. Uh-huh. Right. And uh, so. Oh, dude, I, I I grew up on Max Headroom. Head, I, I did, too. Or, 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 yeah. fucking, I love that shit. Oh, uh, don't that, miss he was it. Pepsi, Tony, I shrunk the he? kids, mm-hmm. yes. the neighbor. That's what he is. All so right. that's gay. What about you, Austin? I want to say Freaks and Geeks. Oh, that's a good one. Was fantastic. Um, so I liked John from Cincinnati on HBO. I don't know if you guys remember that at all. I was going to say that when you fuck her. Yeah. That's I my favorite thought. show that only went one season. And so it was written by the same guy that wrote Deadwood. So and he's got an amazing knack for dialogue. That's my number two because it only so ran two seasons. people who hate Deadwood, one of the biggest things they tell me is like, <clears throat> I can't stand the way they talk. And it's like it's written using the language that they would have back then. I don't know if it's true, but this guy has a very sort well, of puzzly way to do dialogue, and it's incredible. Yeah, he makes it almost Shakespearean, so it's almost yes. like they talk in prose, but in old-timey Wild West language. Yeah, it's really cool. He brought that same gift into John from Cincinnati, and I think it helps that there's a couple, like, cryptic people in it. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it, it's... I can't. I wish we'd have gotten another season because where it was headed, I'm like, this is getting wild. This is super interesting. Did yeah. that end because of the writer strike? I think it did. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think it was that time. It. Yeah, and in Deadwood's case, it just they planned for another season, and then they just the network HBO just made a decision. Nah, we're not doing another one. Did so they, they put did put out a movie though. Yeah, because so many people bitched. Yeah, got uh, it. Kind of got a cult following years after it ended. And they, so they made a movie to like kind of wrap everything up real quick, and that yeah. movie kind of sucked. But um, yeah, how about you, Jeff? Uh, I don't even know if it's not. A, I only saw one season of it. It was called Meteorite Men. <laughs> I never it, heard of it. And it was just these dudes that uh, uh, basically went out with metal detectors and tried to find out where meteors crashed and find pieces of really? meteorites and then sell them to people. <laughs> There were three seasons. Oh, really? Apparently. Wow. And basically, it was just like two guys with metal detectors out in the middle of the desert just for <laughs> half an hour. Like, and they would go, oh, look, I found this. And they'd be like, oh, this is worth $22,000. And he'd be like, sweet. And then that was the end of the episode. It was the most. But I loved it. Like, they were just kind of geeks. And uh, they would trace where these meteors had, like, yeah, and where the splatter patterns and kind of things would be, and yeah, I don't know why I loved it. It was like very zen, like just chill out. And hey, if it's well done, it's well done. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. It's just some. Sometimes it just magic happens. And that's like John from Cincinnati. It made no sense, but like three episodes in, I'm like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. what was it about? So there's it's about a surfing family. And there are three, kind of three generations of surfers. There's a dad, and then there's his son, and then he's got like a kind of a way younger son, like another right. son that was born maybe 15 years, 18 years later. And it's about the, the youngest son is like a surfing phenom. And they're a whole surfing family. They've all been pros. And the youngest son gets into an accident and is paralyzed and then all the shit starts happening around him. And I mean, I guess I'll just say it. Then also there's like a miracle. And then the youngest son is fine. Perfectly fine. And so it's about like kind of figuring out, okay, who are all these people around us now? And what's their significance? They don't allude if this one dude's like an angel or a fucking alien. Or yeah. Whatever. That's what sucked by it ending is because you kind of, you're like, there's something going on. It's kind of paranormal, you know, the shit yeah. going on. And then you're like, there's something about this dude, the mysterious stranger. What What's going to be the, you know, the connection. But and then there's an illusion that the family is significant because like the oldest dad, who's a surfing dude, he starts levitating. 
Yeah, I forgot like about a that. Surfing legend, and <laughs> in it, like people comment, like, "Oh, you wrote a board like it was nothing," and it's kind of alludes, like, "Yeah, it's because you can subconsciously like make yourself levitate." Um, the real young son, he has the miracle healing thing, and I don't know if they mention if he has any other powers. But then the middle son is like he was like a bad boy surfer who had all this potential, and then becomes a drug addict and spins out. So I don't know if they're going to allude to him having something about him as well, but it kind of it ended before it got to really pay off. Yeah, uh, it just, I mean, you can tell, like, they were they were planning for a very long run because yeah. there were so, it was nothing but unanswered questions. Uh, yeah. But yeah. everyone was There was a lot to it. tie together. I don't, Ed O'Neill was in it. Great um, actors. I mean, if you saw the cast, like IMDb, yeah. even if you don't, I can't think of a lot of their names, but you'll, it's like the who's who of people you've seen all over the place. It's really uh, great. Since then, yeah. Um, so that ended from the writer's strike. There was another show called Pushing Daisies, yep. and it was really good on ABC, and it ended basically because of the writer's strike. Oh, really? And it's like, it was, it probably had, a, it had another couple seasons left of, like, valuable content, but they just kind of wrapped it up real quick. You know, Marnie mentioned that she didn't care for Sopranos. Y- yeah. And I have to say that, like, after season three, I, I didn't really care for it either. You could lost me. You definitely couldn't. As great as I thought it was, you had to be hooked by the time season three came around. Like you couldn't walk in on start with season yeah. three. It would. It wasn't good enough. But yeah. the first two seasons I thought were pretty phenomenal. But there were some pretty brilliant episodes in all the seasons. I mean, I'll give them that. I just thought it's real magical when it first starts, and then it kind of loses its luster yeah. for sure. I found I was digging today because um, I had a little break, and I was like. I like to look up shit on movies, so I found some kind of useless movie trivia, if you guys want it. I only have it on my phone, so I had to put my old man glasses on. Your readers? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Armageddon, I think everybody universally loves Armageddon. It's like a crowd pleaser type movie, right? Turn off your brain for a little bit and just watch some cool ass dudes have a good time, save the world. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, I hope some guy who did marketing for Armageddon hears this and just gets a tear in his eye. Like, we nailed our demographic. Guys. <laughs> so here's some trivia you might not know about that show. NASA actually shows this film during their management training program, and new managers are given the task of trying to spot as many errors as possible. At least 168 have been identified in <laughs> watching oh that movie. Gosh. <laughs> so you can imagine, like, at first, they like, tell the makers of that movie, do you know NASA uses this in their training? <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. What's like- the first error? They got an oil crew that they sent out of space. Yeah. Really relying a lot on Ben Affleck, and that feels like a mistake. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we just found two right there. I think Jennifer Gardner has realized you cannot count on Ben Affleck. (laughs) Yeah. And then the fact that he got engaged to Steven Tyler's daughter, another mistake. Freaking animal Um, cracker crap. I know. Didn't he put it down her underwear? Yeah. Yeah. Man, crackers and girls. No, he danced it all fun. over her body. Yeah. Watch the gazelle. So crazy. Did you guys like The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio? I did. Academy I Award winner. Really? Well, well, Donnie's like, you probably wouldn't like it. I'm like, probably not. When it's animals. Mm, you weren't of, allowed? Or well, is that just a cute we, way of saying you were warned? <laughs> it was a cute way to say I was warned. He okay. would never actually say, you're not allowed to. I about soured on the Don. But uh, no, no, no. He, he would never. <laughs> It was a great movie, but in that, just know Leonardo DiCaprio actually made a ch- the choice to devour an entire raw slab of bison's liver in it. So they look real. And he's a vegetarian. So he was like, he doesn't even eat meat in his real life, but he's like, you know what? We're not faking this. Just give me a real bison's liver and I'll eat it. He ate a whole liver for the movie. Sick. That's. That's why Leo's the best. <laughs> Can That's you imagine <laughs> being the guy who's got to go get that? And you're showing up at Bison Farms being like, all right, this is for Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I know. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I need the smallest liver possible, yeah. uh, Also, the... <laughs> The rest of the cra- uh, the cast and the crew were probably like, you know, very noble of you to, you know, I, we respect the integrity of your acting, but also it's 2018. We can make it look just like a yeah. real bison's liver. You don't yeah. have to do this. And it can be delicious. We'll make it whatever yeah. you want. A chef makes it. Yeah. You want we a can tofu? make it out of tofu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, 
All right. Um, Saving Private Ryan. Tom Sizemore. Has everybody seen Saving Private Ryan? Yeah. Oh, how sad is that? Oh, I know. I cried. Tom Sizemore. Actually, Jeff was <laughs> battling his heroin addiction issues during the filming, so much so that Steven Spielberg almost fired him. But in, they negotiated where he had to come in every day and submit to a blood test for for drugs. And, and then with one, if he failed one time, he, they said that they would fire him and reshoot all his scenes with someone else. Whoa! Wow! But he made it through it, dude. He's one of my favorite. Like I always thought he was just the most yeah. badass actor. And I loved him. Man, did he fucking did drugs get that guy bad? I feel horrible for that dude. The guy, he played some of my favorite roles. Oh, like yeah. We, we talked about he and Saving Private Ryan and Black, Black Hawk, Hawk Down. Down. And then and then he just turned, you see him in a hotel room, like playing his own shit. And he weighs like 70 pounds. It's like, come on, dude. You were a badass. Come on. Um, did you know that? I'm, I hope I say her name right. Gal Gadot, Wonder Gal Woman. Gadot. Gal Gadot. Okay. She was pregnant during most of that filming, and they had to put a green screen suit over her stomach to hide the pregnancy. What movie? Wonder Woman. Oh, no yeah. shit. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool. She what was five Reddit months pregnant. Feed did you get this off of? <laughs> uh, remember Castaway with Tom Hanks? Never saw it. But everyone with, with Wilson? always told me I yeah. Wilson. like it. So. Yeah, you do, actually. All right, so... In the, there's a dramatic difference. There's two Tom Hanks in that movie, right? Pre-Island and then on the yeah. island, Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah. So he actually just gained a bunch of weight and stopped working out for like eight months to film the first part of that movie. And then they had to take a one-year hiatus for him to grow his own hair out so he wouldn't have to wear a wig and actually lose a ton of weight and work out till he got super like trim and skinny as if he was stranded on an island. Gosh. These guys. I him could and, lose 10 pounds in eight months if I tried. I couldn't do it. How, how well, many I'm other like movies 50. shortcut this shit? And he's like, you know what? Let's just take, we'll take a year off. Tom can grow his hair out so we don't have to get a wig. Gosh. That's so much commitment well, on behalf. Well, Jess, if you had a personal chef, a personal trainer, a personal, right. a personal knock it the fuck out of your hand person. Uh, they wouldn't you could let me eat the whole of, bag of pizza rolls. But the fact... <laughs> Like, like, let's say uh, one of us goes out for an audition and they go, uh, here's here, you, you have the role. And you're like, well, here's how we're going to play this. Uh, <laughs> we're going to hire everybody for, for six months. We're going to shoot this. Then everyone's going to take a year off. Nobody's going to work. Nobody's going to do anything. You guys are going to wait for me to grow my fucking hair out and for my personal chef and my personal trainer to get me in shape. Then you'll all come back to work a year later when I'm ready, and then we'll shoot the rest of the film. Everybody down? Is that cool? Is that cool with everyone? No one change your hair. <laughs> exactly. Oh, now, the rest of you motherfuckers better not change at all. <laughs> oh, wait. I never saw the movie. so I, I don't want to criticize the guy that made that movie, but it might have been easier to do that in reverse because I doubt they casted it and said we're shooting tomorrow. They probably had a good eight, nine months or right. a year, and they could have said, start now, Tom. Don't cut your hair for the next year and lose a bunch of weight and work out a bunch and then we'll only take three weeks off for you to get sloppy and we'll get a haircut you know what, and though? shoot the beginning they probably it was easier if they needed to cut any more scenes they'd rather have island scenes as mm. opposed to they could see gm or put them in a fat suit to pull S that off look at you thinking on industry that's totally probably the reason it's easier Crack to make code. them fat than it is to make them skinny i have it, never seen that movie just for the record that's why i sound so ignorant it's very good it. and it, it stands the test of time it's an old movie but it's still good today yeah all right awesome. the last one's about the movie the mummy with brendan fraser <laughs> here we go fantastic <laughs> actor brendan fraser brendan fraser nearly died during a scene where his character is hanged rachel weiss remembered he stopped breathing and EMTs had to resuscitate him. Holy crap. It's too bad he survived. <laughs> what are you have a problem with Brendan Fraser for? So many bad movies since then. So He's the king of bad movies, you have to admit. No. 
Mm. I do not. Nick Cage doesn't make that great of movies anymore. Nick Cage. Agreed. We can do without Nick, Nick Cage Nick as Cage well. Nick Cage is a fantastic actor. <laughs> He's just in shitty movies. Horrible yeah. Movies. <laughs> I just saw a clip today I got on FX or whatever channel. The movie Next was on, which I've never seen. But it was a, a car coming down a cliff. And Nick Cage just looks at it and then ducks. And he survives. And the car just rolls over him. Casually. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, God. Damn. There was what? a period... <laughs> Where Nick Cage and Tom Hanks had the same haircut, where they just are missing their sideburns. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's unnerving to be honest. <laughs> it's hard not to notice that they're both. So Tom Hanks lost his sideburns for Da Vinci Code, uh-huh. and Nick Cage just lost his sideburns from like ninety nine to two thousand eleven. No sideburns. I don't know what happened to him. If he just thought this is cool now, yeah. so somebody funny. told him get rid of them. You don't need them. You're Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is? I have mine, and that's why I'm asking this. What is one movie that had a bunch of stars in it that you were super excited about because it had some of your favorite people, and then it just turned out to be a huge piece of shit? And mine is Con Air. I have never like I was expecting such a good film. It had so many big stars I loved. And just a piece of shit from I'm expecting a hard rebuttal from Todd here. I have to disagree with you, Jeff. I thought it was deserving of every Academy Award available. Um, (laughs) Are you kidding me? I just enjoyed it. Put the bunny This is a hard Armageddon demographic right here. (laughs) Con Air was the natural evolution of that. (laughs) What? Uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm a big John Cusack fan. I thought he nailed it. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of good people in that. There was what? some charm in how bad his southern accent was. I don't know. <laughs> they stacked it up for sure. Give us all those actors, and the four of us could write a better, a better fucking film before we go to bed tonight. I like, know. Hey, it kind of so was a waste of resources. One movie I thought was going to be really good was the um, the latest Ghostbusters. All those women in it are fantastic and everything. It's the people that made Bridesmaids, which is one of my favorite movies. It's one of the best comedies of all Love time. Love Bridesmaids. It, it literally, I mean, I got so mad when so many dudes I knew, they're like, oh, Bridesmaids isn't funny. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. That, Dude, it's the funniest it was movie great. made that decade, mm-hmm. probably. Um, it's that whole crew. I thought it was going to be amazing, and it just it didn't. I don't know. I don't know what it was. It just didn't get off the ground for me. I'm going to say Grown Ups. To this day, still what? pissed off about Grown Ups. Oh, now you're. Did you like it, Jess? Mm, Adam she Sandler could do no wrong. Adam he is. Does. <laughs> I won't even. I no. It had everybody no. I love in it, and I was I just like, even "Say Jack and Jill." What do we no. do it? <laughs> Maybe that one thought. wasn't. Oh, yeah, I thought it was Dollsville. I'm like, Jesus. Did you like Christ. the sequel? No, I didn't oh, like any of them. Fun. They're not good. Just so what about you? Them? I can't think of it. I'm trying to think of what it's called. Um, Just walk nights us through at the it. hotel. Whatever hotel it is. Artemis. Uh, it's with Chris no, Hemsworth uh, as the bad guy with the open shirt. And uh, uh, John Hamm's in it. Bad times at the hotel. El Rey or whatever. Yeah, something something like real close yeah, to that. I saw it too. Yeah, it was sucked. Oh, no. it sucked. I couldn't I, stop that watching, sounds like but it I was sucks. like. Yeah, <laughs> and we should have known by the even the trailer showed just this is just weird and it's not going to work. But like bad times at the El Royale, yes, yes. Yeah. something like that. Yeah, it was horrible, Jeff. Don't watch it. Well, I'll be honest, Todd. I would have liked Con Air if you would have just like taken ten normal actors who I'd never <laughs> seen before and they made that film. Right. I would have fucking loved it. No. But the fact you had no. all this talent and that's what you produce, <laughs> you suck. Jeff, it was a personality vehicle. There is nothing <laughs> cerebral about the plot. There's no character development. There's nothing to explore or learn. Old boys like a f- former army ranger who got sent down the creek and you got shithead starting shit. That's it. Done. That's pretty much it. Right. Yeah. And we could have anyone start that shit. die hard on a plane. I we could have anyone start that shit. But take what such great if we had Nick Cage do it? You, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm ashamed to say it. Well, actually, I'm not ashamed. It's fine. Donnie actually quoted Con Air this week, and I forget what part. It was something about Leonard Skinner playing when they get on the plane, and they go, huh, well, that's not good. 
Yeah. Well, they all died in a plane. <laughs> yeah. We are. It's like whatever it was, like Steve Buscemi says. Or... Thanks yeah. for proving my point. Uh, <laughs> Steve Buscemi was uh, the weird, the weird. She, oh, she just hit a button. Hang on, she's back. She's oh, back. She just is. switching places on us. Oh, this is easier for me. Now I, I can just I think this because you instantly came back. I think the system took a hiccup or something. The system farted. Oh, oh I'm still that was kind of cool. That. It was um, the Nick Cage gods. <laughs> Steve Buscemi. I, if it's I was him, I would have said I'm not playing this role because he played a weird, creepy serial killer guy. <laughs> like wasn't needed. Wasn't needed. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing fingers. Yeah. Uh, it was basically like how he is in Armageddon, though. He's the crazy kind of wacko guy. Like, yeah. I don't want to pay taxes again, and I'm going to take out this huge loan, and leave me with the bomb. Trust me, guys. No. Mm -hmm. And he goes crazy. And he's great in all the Adam Sandler movies, including Grown Ups. <sighs> yeah, you're right. You know what? I think he was the best one in Grown Ups. What's up, my fellow kids or whatever? <laughs> Steve Buscemi is in a lot of Adam Sandler movies, he is, isn't he? He's, he's one of the yeah, he loves him. He I, is one of my eyes. favorite actors. I just watched David Spade's um, interview with, like, Sandler came on David Spade's new show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was the most enjoyable 25 minutes I've spent of my life. Watching those two go back and forth and talk about the good old yes, and they just two buddies catching up almost like it was it was great. Like they talked about their the, when they first met all the way into making movies together and all this stuff. It was fucking funny and kind of heartfelt. And it, I mean, it was literally the best twenty five minutes to half hour of television I've ever seen. I love that. I love that because so many comedians do podcasts where they interview people and they interview other comedians. And it'll be the same shit over and over again. But when somebody gets like their best comedy friend on there, you can feel it because they don't even talk about anything and they're just like squealing before yeah, right. everything they say. Yeah. It's adorable. Yeah, it was it was really good. I'm becoming I I used to shit on David Spade, I'm gonna be honest. I used to shit on him for just riding the coattails of Sandler and not having his own talent. I have become a huge fan. I don't. I don't know. He's grown on me. I was wrong. Like he's very talented. Now that he's out doing kind of the second wave of his career, I am loving me some David Spade. He was in Police Academy uh, three or four, I believe. D that's what they talked about. Like he was a big deal when he was very young as a comedian at all the comedy clubs because he had this heat from doing Police Academy three or four. He had, like the most potential <laughs> yeah. on him out of all those guys, and I think he mm -hmm. was like the best stand up. Out yeah, of those his, his stand up was good back then for sure yeah I'm sure it is i now, love his new show and i know i'm a huge snl fan and maybe that's why but when he has like dennis miller on and they're just talking about their f the first skit like i wrote the skit for you and this was what we had you do and that like i love that show. i love like, it too. i can listen to it all day long and that and maybe that's why i like his show because uh -huh. of all the inside snl you hear right but um I, I I like his show. I think it's great. What's what's it on? Is it on Netflix? It's on Comedy Central. Lights okay. out with David Spade. Yeah, but I watch so I good. watch clips of it on YouTube. Like yeah. I, I you consumed. almost can consume the whole show on YouTube. That's I mean, how I do it. It's so good, and he has. I I really am a big Frangella fan, and he has Frangella on there now. So, um, but he David Spade. I watched his HBO Young Comedian special when I was younger. And it was so good because he he did some impressions that were fucking spot on. Like he did Michael J. Fox, like, but he did Michael J. Fox like of Casualties of War, Michael J. Fox or something, which is the most obscure Michael J. Fox, which I loved. <laughs> Instead of you know Back to the Future, but he's like, do you always notice how when uh, when uh, Michael J. Fox is in a movie, he always sounds like he's out of looks like he's out of breath, you know? So every scene, he's like. What are we talking about here, Sarge? <laughs> his impression is spot on. And every yeah. every reference he did, it was only casualties of war, but without telling you it was gonna be casualties of war. It was just brilliant. Like uh yeah, he's he was really good. So well, I think we've done a good job of putting this one together. Jess, you're a blast. Oh, yeah. thanks for having me here. Yeah, Same I'm glad that you're here. You're glad that you're here. And everybody should know Doc Kids is on hiatus. Don't panic. A few people panicked on it. It's probably going to be back, but for now, it's this. We'll do this, and we'll let this grow, and then we'll work it out from there. So welcome aboard, Jess. As always, Jeff, Austin, you guys are awesome. Thanks. Bye, everybody.
See you guys later.